we're going to be using Lambda and API gateways so we can create a serverless function and also an API where we can uh, go to that API in the browser or hit it through a web application or Postman, pass in parameters to it, and then those parameters are going to be displayed or used in Lambda. So for instance, we could send in an ID or uh, anything like that inside the URL. So let's get started. I go to Lambda, I'm going to create a function, and I'm actually just going to call this one Hello World. You can call it whatever you want for your application. Now permissions, if this is your first time using Lambda, then you just want to have it create a new role with for you with these basic Lambda permissions. Uh, I have created a function in the past, and I don't like it when it creates a bunch of um, roles for me, so I'll just come here and select the previous Lambda execution role that I have. And we'll create the function. It's going to create a really simple hello world type of um, application or function for us here in Node.js. You can change your language depending on what your preference is, right? This supports like Python, Node.js, Go, Java, etc. cetera. Um, so here right now we get a response from this, uh, from this function when we run it. It's simply going to return hello from Lambda here with the response code of 200. What I want to do is immediately go into API Gateway because we're going to invoke the function that way. So if you go into API Gateway, I don't have any APIs at the moment, so it's going to ask me to create a new one right off the bat. I'm going to scroll down a bit, and I'm going to select this REST API, just because it's what I'm familiar with. You can read up on other types of APIs as well. Uh, this one says that this supports Lambda, and cool, this looks like everything we need. This one right here is only accessible from within a VPC. Uh, this one's going to be publicly accessible to the world, just for testing purposes. Click OK. I'm going to create my own API. I'll teach you how to do this. And I'll call this uh, test API. You would call it whatever you'd like for your application. Let's leave these as is and go ahead and create that. Maybe the endpoint you could change to whatever you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to leave it as regional. OK, so we need to create a method for this. I'm going to start with creating a post method. So let's go ahead and create a post method. And I'll show you all of this. This isn't like a deep dive on API Gateway right now. We can do some more videos on that. I just want to show you how to run this code immediately from API Gateway with some parameters in there. So I'm going to do that hello world function that we created in Lambda is what's going to be triggered whenever I hit this API on with a post request, right? With the post method. So you can choose different types of integrations. So this is going <coughs> to trigger different actions to run within AWS, excuse me. We'll use default timeout. For now, this is all fine. Click OK. Cool. Let me launch this API just to show you what it looks like. So we'll deploy it. We'll have to create a new stage for this. So I like to create a dev stage first. You can write a description and a deployment description if you'd like, but I'm going to leave, or maybe I'll just put this is the development stage. Deploy. And we'll preemptively create a staging just to show you that. Cool, we'll copy that whatever code we sent to dev. I created a staging so we can I can show you what it looks like just to push these APIs and you know test with different ones. So back to resources. This is uh, stages. This is going to show you like obviously the different stages because if you're working on the dev API, um, you're going to have different routes potentially and different things that you could break, whereas like if you push that code to staging, staging could remain the same without having those, you know, just like a typical coding environment. But anyways, we'll go back to the resources here. Oh, I was going to show you how to run this. Okay, so once you push that, right, and you deploy your API, you have this invoke URL here. So you can copy this URL, and you can invoke it either in right, the browser, or more typically, it's going to be from Postman. So I have Postman open here. I'm going to preemptively put in the URL that I'm going to be hitting right here. And then also the type of method that I'm going to be using. So you have get, get post, put, patch, etc. I'm going to be using post in this instance. It actually will work, I think. Let's see. So I'll just send a post request to this um, API URL. And you can see it says hello from Lambda. Cool. So now let's go ahead and start inserting those parameters. There's this event thingamabob up here that we can take advantage of from Lambda. Hello 
from Lambda, the ID is, and then I'll put event. Inside that event, I'm gonna pa um, pass in a parameter, right? So like, let's say I'm in Postman, I'm gonna have this ID, and then I'll name it like 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, just for fun. If I send it now, I'm gonna get an error, or well, I'm still gonna get that old code. Um, but also this API doesn't really know how to handle these parameters as of right now. So we'll have to go ahead and, and teach it how to do that. But so when I pass it here, there's gonna be that parameter here. I'm gonna call it ID, just you know, just to grab that ID. Um, we could call it whatever you want, right? Whatever the parameter is gonna be. Maybe it's a provider, maybe it's a location, whatever it is. But right now I'm gonna keep it as ID. I'm going to preemptively deploy this here. Okay, now back to API Gateway. So my, my code in Lambda has been updated. So now if I run it from Postman here, the ID is undefined because right now the API Gateway doesn't understand how to handle this parameter that, that I'm passing in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So back to resources, go to post. It's kind of hard to navigate around the API Gateway um, console sometimes. So just remember resources here is what you're gonna be clicking to create like new methods or new resource. So new resource meaning like a different part of this URL. Right now I'm just using the naked URL and I'm gonna pass in a query like ID 1A 2B 3C. But you can also create new paths here. So you can do dev slash, maybe you were creating a PDF with this. So you could click create PDF and then inside that PDF, you could also have other methods. Like let's say you're creating a PDF for a single provider, single provider, et cetera, et cetera. And I didn't mean method, I meant uh, resource. So you could do that by creating these new resources, right? But we're not getting into that right here. I'm just kind of showing you around. So then what we really want to do is go to the integration request, come down to mapping templates. And this is where we're going to like, where it says like, you know, map stuff. We're gonna map the parameters that we're sending to the API, to the application, so the application and the API know how to handle these parameters. I'm gonna put in application slash JSON type. Okay, this is gonna accept the JSON type of uh, object. So just stick with me here. But here's what we paste in on this object here. So pretty much just saying, you know, ID is gonna be mapped to ID. Save it. Now the cool thing is once we deploy this API, very important to deploy it. First we'll deploy it to staging. We can rerun this code, right? We still have that parameter here. We go ahead and send it. And we're getting a define still. Okay, we just had to give it a little bit for the API to update. And once it's updated, you can see we run the code again, and now it's saying the ID is 1A2B3C4D. Okay, cool. Now, since this code is essentially working, what I'm gonna wanna do is go to resources. Let's push this to staging as well. In case I start breaking stuff on dev, I'll know that staging is working, and hand my manager this link here so he can use this staging API, which I know isn't broken as of right now. We can hand this to the client perhaps, or we can pass it out internally, and things aren't gonna break here, but I can do whatever I want on dev, right? Because that's what pros do. So it would be very similar to what I do here. I just run it with the, the staging URL instead of the dev URL, so I'll paste that, send it, and I get the same response. <coughs> Gonna change it back, excuse me, I'm gonna change it back to dev right now. Cause we're gonna start messing with some more stuff here. We're gonna create a new method. You know what, let us create a new resource first. I'm gonna call this, um, let's say we're gonna get a PDF, so I'll call it get PDF. Create that resource here. And in that resource, I will create a method. It's going to be a get method, so I can run it in the browser and show you what that looks like and what we'll have to do there. And for now, I'm gonna do the same hello world function that runs once I get this, and I'll click okay. 
show you what I'm going to deploy it and I'll show you what this bad boy looks like only on dev and I'm going to go ahead and deploy so now back on stages this just to kind of illustrate what this is going to look like the workflow right on dev this is the only one where I deployed those changes so it has that new route that get PDF route with the new you know the get method on it whereas staging only has that post here so back in resources I will go to this get <coughs> well let's try calling this first right so stages dev we get this URL um, let me just show you what I think it will there we go give us that link off the bat so I'll run this get method here get PDF hello from lambda the ID is undefined so the cool thing is that this is actually working whereas if we were to try to just run the other code because it's a post method it's not going to be working for us but <coughs> so this code is running the ID is just undefined um, so let's try to pass in an ID is equal to 1a b 3c we're gonna see that the ID is undefined still so we gotta do a couple things here so go back to resources go back to this get method we had here and we're gonna have to pass in that mapping information again oops so that's in the integration request scroll down to the mapping templates click never here and add your own mapping template and we're going to add in this application slash json template again so we know how to map in the parameters that we pass to whatever application we're using so we'll create an object here and then just follow along for now but we're mapping the id query to you know id so we'll click save and after we save it Gonna go ahead and deploy this. I, it's not gonna work yet. We have to do one more step. I just want to show you. So let's come here, give it a couple seconds, and rerun this. We still get the ID is undefined. What we have to finish this up with is go to the get method. Oops, always under resources. I'm always <laughs> in stages. Once you deploy it, method request, and come to HTTP request headers and add a header, and we're gonna call it method dot request dot query string dot id and we will have this be required okay and i'm gonna go ahead and deploy the api one more time and then with any luck okay just give it a few seconds rerun the code and now you'll see that we can pass in the parameters from the url and it's running in our code so this is really awesome and it's a good stepping stone into some of the next lessons that we'll be doing, we'll create some better applications with Lambda, but I hope you enjoyed this one.